Hey folks, I'm live on Saturday, 28th of November, 2015. I don't usually do a live show on Saturdays, <laughs> but I call this Saturday Review because we have to look at the information that is out there from this past week's news. Well, there's been protests all over the place. You can see that. There was a shooting in a Planned Parenthood. There was uh, a Russian jet taken out by Turkey. And just a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> okay, just a whole bunch of stuff. Now, let's take a look at something that I feel is one of those things where, you know, you, you really should pay attention to, okay? And it literally is, you have to watch the leaders of the world from Francois Hollande to Vladimir Putin to President Obama to the other leaders that are in NATO and the UN, you have to look at them. You have to watch them. You have to understand their body language in terms of their view and their stance on what is going on. Now, specifically, we had Turkey shoot a Russian jet out of the sky because they said it violated Turkey's airspace. We get people on all sides, you know, saying, oh, this is just, you know, retaliation for the support for the Syrian rebels, blah, blah, blah. Then you get the other people going, this is the start of World War Three. Who knows? You know, who really knows? And I seem to remember. No, I do remember. Back when Reagan was president, people said he was the worst president on the face of the earth. I disagree with that wholeheartedly. He wasn't. He was a self-avowed socialist, but he knew what the people wanted, and he did everything he could to do to help that out. But he also raised taxes. So there's good and bad. But he had this whole thing going on back then as well of what he was dealing with. How did he deal with it? He dealt with it very abruptly and very succinctly. And it took a great deal of patience, I saw, to deal with Germany at the time. And he, he, he just said, you know, Gorbachev, tear down this wall. It wasn't Gorbachev that did it. It was the people because the people were tired of it. So we have to deal with the people. We have to deal with what's going on. But we also have to look at the reaction of the leaders of the world. Putin, Obama, Hollande, the king of Saudi Arabia, whatever. You know, we have to look at these people because... Of the fact that they're going to, believe it or not, telegraph what they're going to do next. Okay? They're going to do that. And it's going to happen. And it's going to be there. And it's going to be in people's faces. Now, unfortunately, I don't have time to go into all of how you need to look at that and yada, yada, yada. But I will say this, <clears throat> pay attention to it, folks. Just pay attention to it because you're going to see what's going to happen next or you're going to get a good idea as to what's happening next, all right? Seriously, <laughs> it's going to be there, I'm sure, okay? I'll be back right after this. Don't go away. This is the American Liberty Radio Network, AmericanLibertyRadio.com, American Liberty Radio at USA.com.
This is the American Liberty Radio Network. Go to our website at AmericanLibertyRadio.com or email us at AmericanLibertyRadio at USA.com. The reality underneath the honesty. LiveTruthRadio.com Are you tired of listening to boring online late night radio? Then listen to Late Night in the Midlands with your host, Michael Vera. 9 p.m. to 12 midnight Eastern. Go to www.latenightinthemidlands.com for more information. Welcome back. This is the American Liberty Radio Network right here on Spreaker. You can go to AmericanLibertyRadio.com. AmericanLibertyRadio.com. American Liberty Radio right here on Spreaker.com. You can always uh, check us out in the archives. Yes. <clears throat> so what's happening this week, this past week? Well, Saturday Review will tell you. Now, <clears throat> as I said before at the beginning of the show, there was a shooting at a Planned Parenthood in Colorado Springs, Colorado. I didn't tell you that part, but it was in Colorado Springs, Colorado. The witnesses described chaos during Planned Parenthood clinic shooting. Gunman has been identified, but authorities still in the dark about his motives, mental state, or ideology. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, let me go on here uh, and say this. This is from the Associated Press. I found it on Infowars.com. A gunman burst into Planned Parenthood uh, clinic and open fired, launching several gun battles. In an hour-long standoff with police, as patients and staff took cover under furniture and inside locker rooms, by the time the shooter surrendered, three people were killed, including a police officer and nine others were wounded, authorities say. For hours, police had no communication with the shooter other than inter uh, in <clears throat> intermittent gunfire from inside the Colorado Springs Clinic. As the standoff progressed, officers inside the building herded people into one area and evacuated the others. Officers eventually moved in, shouting at the gunman, and persuaded him to surrender, police said. About five hours after the attack started, authorities led away a man wearing a white T-shirt. The law enforcement official identified the gunman as Robert Louis Deere of North Carolina. The official, who had direct knowledge of the case, was not authorized to speak to the media about the ongoing investigation and spoke to the Associated Press on the condition of anonymity. Deer is 57 years old and is, according to jail booking record. Interesting, they don't know his motives, they don't know his mental state, and they don't know his ideology. Why is ideology such the big push-button keyword nowadays? Why is ideology the thing that literally divides a continent? 
I'll tell you why. Because one group, well, it, well, you know, let me put it to you this way in this example. You have four people in a room. You have four different ideologies. You have four different philosophies. You have four different belief systems. Guaranteed, give, given time somewhere around, I don't know, three hours, four hours, you're going to have one person in that group dominating the rest of them. I don't even think it's going to take that long. But for this illustration, let's say it took about three hours. Ideology plays a huge role in creating and establishing a, uh, a system by which people are brainwashed, people are pushed into a corner, people are subjugated. Oh, you don't believe me? You don't believe me? Huh. Why did the Western Europeans leave Europe, and England specifically, to come to a new world? Religious persecution. Oh, but that didn't stop there. No, no, no. The people came to the new continent, this new world, and said, well, you know, um, let's see. <laughs> so they... They fought with one another to try to come up with something that was going to help them uh, divide itself from the tyranny of European, you know, ideology. So they stepped forward. Some people stepped forward and began to say, hey, this is what we want to do. And other people, the majority of, of them would say no. And then other people would step forward and say, well, this is what we want to do because we feel that the other group just didn't have it all together. And the massive group that was there went, no. Battles and yelling and, you know, this kind of thing broke out. And finally it got back to Europe. England specifically, the, the uh, tyrannical uh, Europe of that time. And King George went, you know what? I'm done. Let's go over there and take their guns and just subjugate all those people. Because that's what his motive was, just to you know, bring them back into the fold. So he did. Well, you can see how well that worked out for them, <laughs> because no matter what differences these people on the new continent uh, had, uh, they decided that they weren't they they did not want to go back to that tyrannical uh, religious persecution and other political persecution that was happening back then before they left. And so they got together and went, no, we have to stop this. And then they realized, hey, wait a minute, we can work together. <laughs> so um, the War of Independence in the United States of America broke out. And, well, the rest is history, as they say. But it didn't last long. Another ideology stepped forward into the framework of the new newly christened United States of America, and it was like 90 years later when the Act of 1871 was signed into law by President Ul Ulysses S. Grant. Well, the ideology behind that was the corporations, specifically the Rothschilds of Europe and the descendants of the Rockefellers and others here, decided... Well, since we didn't conquer these people and subjugate them, we'll do it another way. Commerce. They created trade. They created this. Then they created laws for that trade. Then they created other things. <laughs> so you see how that went. And we're still under that corporate constitution to this day. Not the organic constitution. No, no, no. That was signed December 15th, uh, 1791. No, 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 no. <laughs> the, the ideology literally behind 
uh, all that was subjugation. Europe wanted a, wanted people back into the fold. And when we pay taxes, connect them, connect the dots, and and follow the money, folks. This is all I encourage you to do. Connect the dots and follow the money. Our taxes go to the queen indirectly, but they go to the queen. Canada is ruled by the queen twice. The, uh, the queen flew over to Canada and suspended parliament. Went, no, wait, wait, what are you guys doing? She just went, no, boom, told the prime minister, of, I think, uh, told Harper once or twice and then told uh, the other guy, uh, I forget his name right now, but uh, told him, ah, oh, stop, wait a minute, here's what we're going to do. <laughs> Hit the reset button. That's what the Queen of England did to Canada. Now, some Canadian folks that I know would say, well, it was for the good of the country. And, uh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't, really. <clears throat> Hey, before I go to break here at the 20 Aftermark, I want to say hello to the one and only J-Man. Check out the J-Man Show or under the Truth War on Spreaker.com because that's what it is. Uh, I love that name, Jay. <laughs> I really do. Because everybody, again, ideology, again, you know, you look at differences of, uh, of opinions, different uh, perspectives, but yet who has the ultimate absolute truth in all of it? One, you know, the four people. Go back to that example. One person may say they have it. One person, they all four are going to say, I got the truth. Really? Okay. It's not a battle of wits, because I hate having a battle of wits with unarmed people. But it's basically perspective. How did the United States uh, come together as a, uh, as a country prior to its inception when it was the British colonies? Even though people disagreed with one another, they were all on the same page when it came to liberty and freedom from tyranny. So when King George went, uh, we're going to go take their guns, everybody got together and went, uh, no, you're not. <laughs> So it, it all boils down to taking and looking at the, the facts. And where do you find those? You dig, 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 dig. Follow the, you know, connect the dots. Follow the money. Connect the dots. Look at this. Look at where people are coming from. And you know full well, and I'm going to spell it out for you right now. People are going to oppose anything that is factually and and accurately the truth they're going to it's going to happen so so there you go going to go to break here in about a minute um the the whole issue with this this ideology thing this whole issue with how people are at this point in time and, and 28th of November, 2015, it, it, we, we are coming unglued folks. We need uh, a sense of, of, of peace and calm and say, Hey, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's pull back from the chaos and see what the hell we're doing. Okay. Let's just point our finger where it needs to be pointed, take care of the problem. And hopefully Things will calm down just a little. Okay. Hey, I'm going to... Well, we go to break here. I'll be back in uh, hopefully about a minute. <laughs> so don't go away. American Liberty Radio Network right here on Spreaker. AmericanLibertyRadio.com. Talk to you in a bit, folks. The reality underneath the honesty. Listen to Brian Lang over at Live Truth Radio. Go to LiveTruthRadio.com for more information. What we see is not reality. It is distorted reality. 
Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker on Facebook. The only choice for all your independent hits on the internet. Radio Rock 92.6 The Blitz. Go to RadioRockTheBlitz.blogspot.com. Hey folks, welcome back. American Liberty Radio Network right here on Spreaker.com. Hey, if you have a half hour or more, go to Spreaker.com, check out their plans. They got a plan to fit your budget. Check it out, man, down at the bottom of the page. If you don't want to do that, hey, go over to the right-hand side of the bottom of the page at Spreaker.com. Check out all the apps they have for all your communication devices right there. You should be set to listen to this show and any other show on Spreaker.com, including The Truth War. Yes, with your host, Mr. J-Man. Yeah, go check him out. There you go. Anyway, lots more to come. Hey, go check out another friend of mine. He's uh, not, I don't think he's on Spreaker. I think he's doing his own thing elsewhere. But check out a friend of mine, uh, Spencer Hughes. Yes, go to SpencerHughes.net. Oh, and by the way, he does this thing called Periscope. That's an app that you can put on your iPhone or Android. And uh, you can do live little broadcasts right there. He uh, has uh, Periscope uh, from uh, from his phone as well. Uh, he, uh, I like to say he scopes a lot. So, <laughs> you know, so uh, he does some live uh, stuff as well. And... Uh, He's out of the Bay Area of San Francisco. And and uh, so check it out. Spencer Hughes over at SpencerHughes.net or uh, go to ConnectPals.com and check out uh, Spencer Hughes. He's over there as well. Uh, it's a premium site, so if you want to sign up, great. If not, just check out his website. It's got all the information there. SpencerHughes.net. Yes. Um, so anyway, and uh, you probably heard the uh, little uh, promo there as well, but uh, uh, check out uh, Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker. You want to know, <laughs> I swear to goodness, this guy knows stuff I don't. So, yeah, isn't that surprising? <laughs> so, check him out. Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker on Facebook. He's there. Check it out. He used to have a podcast. Uh, he's looking at uh, trying to do that again. And I'm trying to get him to uh, uh, record short little 10-minute uh, blurbs or, you know, just something short to put on this, uh, on this uh, network as well here on Spreaker to let you know who this guy is. So, hey folks, I, um, let me get on with the uh, freaking news, shall I? <laughs> Got the bottom of the hour break coming up. If I keep talking, I'll run right into it. Uh, from Michael Snyder, from End of the American Dream, uh, posted today, found this on Infowars.com. Obama knows that Turkey is buying oil from ISIS and he isn't doing anything to stop it. Did I not tell you, folks? Did I not tell you? that? Well, I told somebody today. I think I was talking to J-Man earlier and I told him that uh, Turkey is shaking hands with themselves. You know, ISIS runs. A, I mean, you think these people don't have money? Uh, excuse me. <laughs> they do. They're connected, folks. <clears throat> they're connected. Now, speaking of connections, let me speculate at this point. I'll throw this theory out at you. Um, I think that ISIS is better equipped than the mainstream media is telling you. And I think it's through the Rothschilds. I think it's through the, uh, the likes of people like George Soros. I think there's 
a lot of connection to big money. But again, speculation theory. I don't have anything to connect that dot yet, so hang tight. I just might. <laughs> so anyway, um, the uh, the whole issue <clears throat> of uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm typing as you can tell. <clears throat> Uh, the whole issue with what's going on with ISIS is basically this. They want to dominate through uh, the Islamic uh, world uh, and create uh, Sharia law for everyone. And as far as I'm concerned, <clears throat> excuse me, that's not going to happen. And I think most Americans will stand by me and say the same thing. By the way, if you look at the basic level of the Quran, it's all from, and I'm going to preface this by saying this, small s, keep that in mind, but the basic premise of the Quran is coming from the mindset of those that are, small s, satanic. And in in terms of adversarial, in terms of, uh, you know, again, going back to those four people that I talked about in the room, one's going to dominate the others. Well, the other three have to just step up and kick the other one out of the room. But then again, you're looking at the premise of total and absolute world control. Let me give you another example. Sorry, I had to get some water there, man. <clears throat> Let me give you another example. I saw a film many, many years ago, and you can find this on YouTube. You can find this someplace. And it was by Hal Lindsey, and the movie was called The Late Great Planet Earth. Check that out because it nails it right down. He talks about it from a Christian point of view, from prophecy point of view. And there's other things like Doug Batchelor and other, the uh, other people who talk about prophecy that literally line up with quote unquote Christian ideology. But when you look back and you look at people such as Nostradamus or Edgar Casey or many others, and they talk about those two specifically talked about a world, uh, you know, order when you look at it. Now, a lot of people say, well, you can't say that about Nostradamus because you can just, you know, take what today is and place it in whatever quatrain there was and yada, yada, yada. You've heard it all, right? No. You have to look at what was going on back then. Okay. And you have to identify those things which are key elements back then that was talked about and prophesied through Nostradamus and look at what's happening today. Key moments, key little elements. You just can't take today and go, oh, yeah, we'll just place it there. No, 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 no. So bottom of the hour break, folks. Yeah, I know. Jeez, too many breaks. Why are you taking too uh, yeah, I just I gotta promote too many people, such as J Man, the Truth War, right here on Spreaker. Hey, folks, um, I'm going to take a long break. So whatever you gotta do, please go do it and come on back and listen to uh, Saturday Review right here on American Liberty Radio Network, AmericanLibertyRadio.com. Yeah. From the directorial debut of Brian James Griffo, two brothers faced with a rare genetic disease that causes blindness decide to take a journey of a lifetime 
and answer the question, what would you see if you knew you were going to go blind? It honestly makes me feel so small and like whatever problems I have are nothing. What would you do? You're supposed to smell it first. Who would you meet? This is an opportunity for us to connect with people. Oh, I can see you. In a groundbreaking documentary that cuts to the heart of what it means to be a brother. It blows my mind that a hundred years ago, this is how people would have done this trip that we're doing. Yep. And gain a world of vision while losing eyesight. Come along to be inspired and reminded of the very meaning of life through a 12,000 mile road trip. Driving blind. Coming soon. Coming to America. <laughs>Hey, how you doing? This is the American Liberty Radio Network right here on Spreaker.com. Go to Spreaker.com, check out the shows that are there. Hey, there are some shows I like, there are some shows that I don't like, and there are some shows that just I wish were in the garbage. Because, yeah, why is making fun of people and bashing people considered entertainment? I, I just never could understand that. I just, I never, I never could understand that. <clears throat> so I don't know, dude. So <clears throat> I, uh, so go to Spreaker.com, check out the shows that are there. You might find one that, hey, that you like or not. <laughs> so check it out. Spreaker.com. They have apps for your phone. So check that out. That's down at the bottom of the page on the right hand side. So, uh, and if you want to do a show, they give you 30 minutes free. So you might want to check that out too. And, uh, yeah, the plans that they have are excellent. Uh, they're better than another network I was on blog talk radio. And, uh, they, uh, they're really cool. They're really cool. Now, let me, let me, let me say this. I was 
giving blog talk radio a bad time let me say this i went over there recently and they've got this pro plan that if you look at it it sounds really really good i mean they have an example of the sound remember how it used to sound like radio you know like really bad am radio now it's sounding pretty good so i don't want to give them too much grief all right they're they're working on it all right <laughs> they're working on it um the uh <clears throat> i got a few more minutes here before my last break of the day um yeah i know too many breaks i got too many people to promote and if you got a show that you want to promote send a promo over i'll send you mine that's all you gotta do yeah hey but hey oh hey wait hold on if you want to advertise and support the american liberty radio network you can do you can do it two ways <clears throat> You can email me, and I'll let you know from that, you know, from I'll tell you how much and, and all that. Or you can go to my personal website, waynespierce.com. There's a GoFundMe link right there. You can help out there as well. Or if you go to the uh, <clears throat> AmericanLibertyRadio.com, there should be a link there that says Donate. So there you go. Uh, help out independent media and uh wander on over to j-man's show over there the truth war check him out uh, if he has a, a an email address uh, contact him if he's got a link to a, his website there you go because everybody in this area needs support and i'll tell you why <clears throat> The tagline for the American Liberty Radio Network is sharing the truth one fact at a time without all the BS. And we expose what's going on behind the scenes, behind the curtain, if you will, of the mainstream media. We have to. Why? Because you folks deserve the facts without all the BS, right? Another show that uh, you might want to check out from uh, another independent uh, media person is mr brian lang over at live truth radio.com check his show out as well um yes <laughs> what a week we have had um so anyway what a week we have had such as after the my last break of the day we'll uh go into this article um let me go over here and uh <coughs> check this out i um uh, sorry the computer decided to want to burp on me here cnn calls colorado spring shooting latest that's quote in quote string of attacks unquote at planned parenthood clinics that's cnn i don't believe them i'd rather throw them in the sea Former CIA operative, get ready for World War III. Isn't that lovely? Uh, NSA begins new phone surveillance program as bulk metadata collection ends. Uh-huh. There you go. Obama compares unvetted Syrian Muslim migrants to pilgrims on the Mayflower. <laughs> Yeah, this is all from Infowars.com. You can go check that out. By the way, if people want to bash Infowars.com, you go right ahead because you obviously don't know what you're talking about because, you know, they got the links to the original stories from, the like, AP and all these other ones. Uh, Yeah, so go ahead, bash them. It's just, yeah, it, it's stupid. But anyway, hey. <laughs> Don't believe me. <laughs> Go check it out. I'll be back right after this. AmericanLibertyRadio.com. If you want to email me, AmericanLibertyRadio at USA.com. Don't go away. I shall return.
This is the American Liberty Radio Network. Go to our website at AmericanLibertyRadio.com or email us at AmericanLibertyRadio at USA.com. The Reality Underneath the Honesty LiveTruthRadio.com Are you tired of listening to boring online late night radio? Then listen to Late Night in the Midlands with your host Michael Vera. 9 p.m. to 12 midnight Eastern. Go to www.latenightinthemidlands.com for more information. The following program is filled with truth and facts. This program may not be suitable for the liberal-minded. Hey folks, how you doing? American Liberty Radio Network right here on Spreaker.com. Or if you haven't already, go to AmericanLibertyRadio.com and check out what's going on over there. I haven't written a blog yet, (laughs) actually in a while, for this site. So uh, I will uh, at some point. And uh, the the thing that... uh, The thing that we really have to take a look at, I'm, I'm serious, I encourage people to do this. Take a look, at, when you're out and about, just, you know, you're out in the mall, you're out paying bills, whatever it is you're doing. Pay attention to how people react to one another. That's a good gauge as to who, uh, who you can trust in your own circle of, of friends. And if you talk to somebody and and you're telling them about, you know, what's happening in the world with Turkey and Russia and all this, and they're just not getting it, and they just went, if they're like, "Eh, that's a bunch of hogwash, blah, blah. If they're doing that to, to you, just walk away. Just walk away. Don't waste your time. Because when you put it out, it's, it's other people may hear you and they may want to, you know, talk to you about that. But the people you're talking to, that you're initially talking to, don't want to hear it. So just, you know, if they walk away, let them. (laughs) If if they want to believe what they want to believe about you or what's going on, let them. Because here's where they live, in the land of delusion. So just let it go. Don't even waste your time. Don't even waste your time. You know, I have a friend of mine that lives in Michigan and, and, and my friend keeps telling me that they look into this stuff and yeah, they listen to me and all this, that, and the other thing. And, and, and here, and here is the typical response, not just from my friend, but a typical response. Yeah, I can agree with you to a certain point, but yeah, add what you want there. Cause that's the typical response. Yeah, I I agree. Yeah, right. If you agree, you'd do something about it, right? I woke up a long time ago to what was going on. And I can tell you right now, 
it's a lot worse than what I thought it would ever be. Not to, you know, throw fear into your direction, but, well, remember this, folks. Here's an anagram that you can plug into your cranium. Fear, false evidence appearing real. Fear, check it out. Um, yeah, <laughs> so there you go. But yeah, it's a lot worse than what I thought it would be because I was looking at trends uh, back in the Carter and Reagan administration and I looked at the, uh, you know, King Bush, the first administration, and then I looked at Clinton and I looked at Bush again and then, uh, you know, King Bush the second. And then, you know, I looked at all this and I went, wow, this is a lot worse than I even imagined it, it could be, you know, and I had to go back on my information that I collected and I looked at it and I went, yeah, okay. At that time, this is what was happening. And you could predict what was going to happen six months to a year from that point. Well, <laughs> it just kept getting worse and worse and worse along the way, you know? So, and the comparison to that, the contrast, I should say to that is the fact that people, you and I, the general public, number one, woke up, number two, continually were uh, um, resilient because every time you beat us down, we get back up. Does not matter. Okay. This, this whole past 8, 10, 12 years has been a constant barrage where we're not, we're barely getting up at this point, but we're on our knees, which, well, there's only one other direction to go after that. We're going to stand up if we haven't already. And we're going to go out and we're going to take care of this problem because we are resilient people. You can batter us, bruise us, make us bleed. We can just keep on walking. Why? Because we don't put up with anybody else's BS. And we sure as hell ain't going to put up with tyranny in our own country from our own government. And I say government talking about Washington, D.C. Okay? It's just not going to happen. <laughs> so there you go. Um, <clears throat> from Infowars.com, NSA begins new phone surveillance program as bulk metadata collection ends. The NSA is ready to move ahead with a different program. This is from, check this out, folks. This is from RT. It's posted at Infowars.com. The National Security Agency will end its mass metadata, uh, metadata surveillance program this weekend, two and a half years after Edward Snowden's revelations. However, the NSA's replacement, quote, reasonable compromise, unquote, is far from being celebrated by privacy advocates. Signed into law this past June, the USA Freedom Act, hello, talk about tyranny, requires that by 11.59 Eastern Standard Time on November 28th, the NSA must cease its bulk data, uh, bulk collection of tele, uh, te telephone data, it says telephony, That's, but I wanted to make sure you understood that. The NSA is ready to move ahead with a different program, also ordered by the law at the same time. In other words, end one, massive surveillance program, implement another more massive surveillance program. By the way, folks, just a little uh, question here for you on a, on a side note here before I continue this article. <clears throat> I've been trying to put Linux Ubuntu on my Windows operated PC. Uh, here's what I want to do ultimately. Get rid of Windows 10 and put either Linux, uh, some sort of Linux distribution on there, okay? So, and Ubuntu I'm pr pretty familiar with, okay? So, how can I just totally get rid of Windows 10? Uh, I may just have to get a new hard drive, shove it in there, put, you know go from there, but I don't know. So any of you tech gurus out there want to email me at American Liberty radio at USA, <coughs> USA.com. 
American Liberty Radio at USA.com. Let me know what that is. Um, <clears throat> how I can do that. Excuse me. This article goes on to say, no longer will the NSA rely on the Patriot Acts Section 215 to collect all phone records. Instead, it will have to contact telecommunication companies holding the data for them. Holding the data for them. Holding the data for them. Go back and read... uh, the Telecommunications Act of 1996, and look at all the subsequent uh, amendments to it up to, I believe, was 2004 or 2008. Unlike general warrants leaked by former NSA contractor Edward Snowden, who is not a traitor, he's a hero in my book, such as the one issued by the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court granted the NSA access to all Verizon customers' records. The new program only allows the NSA to collect records from telecoms with a, quote, specific selection term, unquote, pertaining to limited data is outlined in the uh, FICS warrant, which will limit investigations of metadata to six months. That's mumbo-jumbo, folks. (laughs) <laughs> just mumbo jumbo. Okay. The move has encouraged a wide variety of, of options to be voiced. Quote, the act struck a reasonable compromise, which allows us to continue to protect the country while implementing various reforms. Unquote. Ned Price, a spokesman for the National Security Council, an advisory group to the U.S. president, uh, told Reuters. Meanwhile, Alex Abdo of the American Civil Civil Liberties Union told the Baltimore Sun that, quote, the ending of the phone records program may in the future seem to be more of a symbolic victory, given it was the first major concession the intelligence agency had to make, unquote. I am going to put that one because it is, excuse me, It is important. I am going to put that one on the American Liberty Radio Network Facebook page. And you can check out the rest of the article there as soon as this browser decides it wants to work. (laughs) So, (laughs) see? Yeah, Yeah, anyway. Um, Facts are facts, folks. You can't escape them. Facts are facts. One plus one equals two. That's a fact. 12 times 12 is 144. That's a fact. Okay. All right. I I, I, I don't know what else to tell you. I really don't. I know that as we gather all this information we're beginning to see a trend I do believe we are seeing a trend Um, we are being corralled folks we've got enemies all around us the media is telling us oh let's just go ahead and you know, uh, give your, you know, just, just do what the government tells you to do, blah, de, blah, de, blah. Okay. By the way, your churches are being told that by the federal government as well. Because the churches have been in, uh, infiltrated by federal people. Don't believe it? Check it out. How about clergy response teams? Check them out. Um, but yeah, we're being corralled into this little area. And if you notice the, even the liberal colleges are starting to, well, not starting to, but they're continuing their effort to, uh, suppress free speech on campuses. And if you look at several 
other areas, you'll find that, yes, much like how you corral cows and sheep into this little area, that's what's happening to us. Okay? That's what's happening to us. Now, what do we do about it? What do we do about it? We take into consideration, number one, who we are. We think about who we are, what we are, what our capabilities are, even if you are uh, disabled in some way. And I'm thinking about my friend in Michigan, and I'm thinking about other people I know who are disabled. You can do something, even if it is sitting in a small shack somewhere on a property somewhere with, uh, you know, a pirate radio going and you're telling people around the area. It doesn't matter if it's 5, 10, 15 mile, uh, you know, area. You're telling people, hey, this is what's going on. You're making a difference. Even if you're, you're, you're clinically blind which you're not but i know people who have this uh, uh caricatonus or something like some kind of eye thing going on with the retinas and it but they can still see but if you're disabled in some way you can still do something to make a difference okay again if people aren't going to listen to you and if they call you, you know, one of those right-wing nut jobs or, you know, a, a limbite, uh, <laughs> you know, and if they call you, you know, a conspiracy theorist or whatever, don't even bother with them. Don't even bother with it. They, they're going to have their perspective uh, and their views, and that's going to be them. It, it, they have their own preconceived ideas as to what they want to believe because of how they were raised and what environment and all this. And it all depends on the environment. I became awake when Carter was president many, many years ago, and I went, hey, wait a minute. Something's wrong here. It wasn't until Clinton was president around 1994 was when I realized that everything I learned up to that point wasn't a conspiracy theory it was pure fact so <laughs> everything was verified to me okay so anyway remember where you're at your state of being your state of mind and know that whatever you do you're making a difference and with the other people that are just telling you oh that's a bunch of crap blah 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 Walk away. Don't even don't even bother. Don't even bother with them. Just don't. Because as far as I'm concerned, you can have your own thoughts on this. But as far as I'm concerned with the people that say that to me, they're just a waste of my time. I don't want to deal with them. I just walk away. If they walk away having their own preconceived idea, that's fine. You know, at least I told them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> at least I told them. And if they can't get it, I don't know what else to tell you, boys. I really don't. I'm just putting it out there. I'm just laying it out there on the line. Sharing the truth one fact at a time without all the BS. And I always say, hey, if you think I'm wrong and if you think that the information you have is more accurate than mine, prove yourself right. You don't necessarily have to prove me right because I already got the information. So there you go. Folks, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you, J-Man, for popping in the chat room. Awesome dude, J-Man. Go check him out. The Truth War right here on Spreaker.com. And folks, I'll be around. I'll do a podcast. Talk to you later. AmericanLibertyRadio.com. AmericanLibertyRadio at USA.com. <laughs>